Hello, my name is Fanny and I'm the face behind Spudas and Pudas. Uh, today's video was gonna be about springtimes, but I figured since we had an expo just a few weeks ago, I want to show you a little bit behind the scene from the expo. I got a lot of footage from uh, before, during and after the expo and I want to share with you what happens, what I do as an isopod keeper and seller to prepare myself and go through the expo day. So let's get into it! Having a table at a reptile expo is something relatively new to me. I stood for the first time in the early 2022 and it has been a steep learning curve for me. In this video I want to show how I prepare everything, pack the animals and what a day at the expo can look like. Perhaps even offer some tips and tricks for new exhibitors. First, I do an inventory of which species I would like to bring and how many boxes of each species. Uh, isopods are a bit special and I don't always have enough of a colony to bring animals from it. Therefore, there's usually a slightly different selection at each expo depending on what I can bring. I have a few staple species that I always bring extras of. I've noticed that many new in the hobby are interested in them. Some of my staple species are Rosalio Leiris in different morphs and colorations, Rosalionides prunosus in different morphs and colorations, and Armadilidium gistroi. The hobby in Sweden is very small, and the mistake I made for my first expo was bringing way too many animals, which meant a lot of extra work the day after when everything had to be unpacked again. Therefore, these days I only bring two to four boxes of the more exclusive species and focus more on a large number of boxes, maybe around 8 to 10, of the more beginner-friendly species. I've prepared the boxes a day in advance, where I drill air holes in the lid and sides I price all the animals and print out labels with the species name to stick on the boxes. In addition to this, I also print out pictures of the animals with the species name, morph and price clearly displayed. This is because many insects like to hide and it's not always easy for the buyer to see what's inside the box at the expo. This gives the buyer a chance to get a closer look at the animals and I've noticed that many people are just captivated by the pictures of these fascinating creatures. The day before, it's time to pack all the animals since we leave early in the morning next day. It takes a few hours, so I usually call in my brother to help. We fill the boxes with moist cocoa fiber, some leaves, and every animal gets a small piece of carrot. The more protein-hungry species also get some fish pellets so they don't start fighting in the box. Now the packing begins. We are just hobby breeders, we are no big professional company. So we sit on cushions on the floor and pack one species at a time. We usually have some YouTube videos playing in the background and chat with each other. It's actually a pretty cozy moment. We are bringing isopods, roaches, snails and slugs. Roaches are sold in 10 packs, pillbugs, isopods, in 12 to 15 packs. And I always make sure to add an extra individual or two in the box. Healthy individuals of varying size are packed so that the person who takes the animal home gets a good colony to start off with. We secure all the animals in large bags that are placed in the animal room. Now the day of the expo has finally arrived. I wake up early, pack all the animals and accessories into the car, and then I swing by to pick up my brother. He's joining me to sell some moss, terrarium plants and roaches. It's a three hour drive through the capital to reach the expo. We arrive a little bit after 9am to set up our table. We ensure that everything is set up and functioning properly, and then we take a moment to explore and have breakfast ourselves. This time we are participating in the Stockholm Reptile Expo. At 11am 
Doors open for visitors and the expo officially begins. People stop by to see the animals, ask questions, engage in discussions and even make some purchases. It's incredible to witness the growing interest in the isopods and the rapidly expanding hobby. Day goes by and five hours later it's time to pack our belongings and make our way back home. This expo was incredibly successful, with numerous animals finding new homes, and I had the pleasure of meeting many fascinating individuals. Although I had intentionally planned not to make any purchases, resisting the temptation proved to be harder than expected. I ended up doing a few trades and I stumbled upon a frog that I simply couldn't resist buying. It was a species I've been searching for a long time, so leaving without it was out of the question. Typically, I unpack everything day after the expo. I didn't document this part, since all I do when I get home is tip the boxes into the bins again. It's a simple and time-saving process. That's all for today, I hope you liked this video, give it a thumbs up, comment something and maybe subscribe to my channel to see the future videos coming out. Thank you all for watching and we'll see each other again. Bye bye!